gold has been considered a precious metal since the dawn of human civilization. Not only because of its rareness, but also its immunity to almost all chemical attacks. Being one of the very few metals that remained in its elemental form since the formation of this very planet. And it will stay the same way it is long after humanity falls. But will it survive 40% hydrofluoric acid, one and the only mineral acid that can dissolve glass? Well, there is only one way to find out. Here I have a gold bar from Australian Persimmon. It's 99% pure and has a minimum mass of 1 gram or 0.0315 troy ounce for people who are still using the imperial system. Obviously, it got to be taken out of the plastic case before we can mess around with it. I suppose I could use some brutal force, but I'm a man of science and I don't like to use brutal force. Besides, gold is such a soft metal, I don't want to damage during the process. So let's do it the science way. Okay, I hate to admit this, I have never been so wrong in my entire life. Well, I guess a little brutal force was needed after all. Around 400 ml of DCM is added to the toxic extractor to dissolve the casing. The whole process took roughly the same amount of time that undergraduates have for sleep the night before their thesis due. And for anyone who is bored enough and can sit through the whole thing, I would provide a link up here. Feel free to check it out. Anyway, the gold bar is finally free from its imprisonment and ready for some abuse. Before we actually do that, let's weigh it first. That way we can determine whether or not there is a loss of mass. Aha, looks like I have 2.1% more gold than I actually paid for. That honestly just made my day. Okay, before the big finale with hydrofluoric acid, there's something I want to try first. The coating of this file is made of silver, as this is one of the failed products from my silver metal project, in which some of the silver coating did not stick too well. But now I have found a use for those junks. Concentrated nitric acid is added into the vial. The remaining silver quickly dissolves in a matter of seconds. The oxidizing property of nitric acid allows itself being able to dissolve the metals beyond the point of hydrogen, for which many stronger acids failed to do. After letting the gold bar thin there for about 5 minutes, it was fished out of the vial. Upon close inspection, no visible damage has been done by the acid, though there seems to be a slight color change. In theory, nitric acid does react with gold to a certain degree. But the reaction is not thermodynamically favored. The rate of the reverse reaction rapidly increases as the number of gold ions present in the solution increase. Once the equilibrium point is reached, the reaction stops going forwards. Anyway, let's check if there is a loss of mass. Okay, looks like no mass is lost. Well, at the sensitivity of my scale at least. Okay, moving on to some hydrochloric acid. From the acid trial we just saw, though somewhat lacking of the oxidation ability, hydrochloric acid is a stronger acid than nitric acid. And as usual, for comparison purposes, I'm gonna throw in a small chunk of aluminium. Almost immediately after it is dropped, a violent acid metal reaction starts to take place, producing hydrogen gas and aluminium chloride. Okay, okay, before anyone screams at me in the comment section, demanding that I should mix those two acids together, for which I have already done. The whole mechanic of gold being able to dissolve in a corrigia is actually pretty complicated. I believe it's worth a video of its own. Anyway, a bit off the topic there. Let's go ahead and fish out the vial. Hmm, I must say that I'm not very gifted at using a tweezer. Upon close inspection, there is no sign of any damage other than the scratch mark left by the tweezer. Again, just for making sure, I'm gonna confirm that with my trusty scale. Well, as I expected, no mass was lost. Okay, let's try something new here. How about some piranha solution? The very mixture that's capable of disintegrating diamonds. Okay, I'm gonna throw in a piece of printer paper. Of course, nothing happens yet, but wait until I add the final ingredient. Wow, that was fun. How about some table sugar? Well, the sugar was carbonized the moment they touched and soon disintegrated into gas if it never existed. 
Okay, let me zoom in a little. See how the gold is holding up. Well, there are bubbles forming around the gold. This can be an indication of a reaction taking place between the gold and the acid. But again, this can just be oxygen from the decomposition of hydrogen peroxide, and the gold simply acts as the nucleation site. Well, the only way to know for sure is to take it out and put it on the scale. And it appears no mass is lost. I think this is a very good demonstration to show the rock paper scissors phenomenon of chemistry. Just because something is capable of reacting with certain inert substance doesn't necessarily mean it can react with something less inert. Since hydrofluoric acid dissolves glass, unlike other trials, no glass will be used here for obvious reasons. And、uh, for demonstration purposes, I'm gonna throw in a piece of microscope slide. Okay, I know I don't usually put a warning in the middle of my video, but seriously, don't even think of trying to recreate what you're gonna see next. And obviously, I'm not gonna trust those puny little gloves that I use for other experiments. Just give me a second to suit up. Okay, now I feel a lot safer. I apologize in advance for the poor camera angle and all that, as I will not be able to adjust the camera for avoiding cross contamination. After removing several cells, let's meet the acid of our dreams. It's forty percent in concentration. By the look of it, it seems pretty harmless, but it is without a doubt the most dangerous chemical that I have ever dealt with. And I'm doing this for you, all my viewers. If you haven't subscribed, go down there and hit subscribe button as brutal as you can, and turn the notification bell. That way, you don't miss any of my awesome content. I have a whole HF series coming up soon. Okay, before I dump the ass in there, I would like you to take a guess what you think is gonna happen next. Okay, by the look of it, not a lot have happened at first. Let me quickly pack this time bomb away and wash my gloves. That way, I can zoom into the beaker and show the details. Just after I did everything that I had to do to ensure that I could safely adjust the camera, I noticed that the microscope slide stopped being transparent and taking on a whitish color, which is rather strange. When glass reacts with hydrofluoric acid, the products of which are water and hexafluorosilicic acid. Water, as we all know, is crystal clear. Hexafluorosilicic acid, from what I remember, which I double checked on Wikipedia, is apparently a transparent, colorless liquid that is miscible with water. So this raised a series of questions: from why it turned white to what allows it to maintain its original square shape after supposedly being liquefied. After a bit of soul searching, I realized that glass aren't exactly pure silicon oxides. By saying pure, which is actually an overstatement, depending on the type of glass, the percentage of silicon oxide can be as low as about fifty percent. What happens is during the manufacturing process, factory would introduce additives such as sodium oxide and other shit. Doing that would reduce the melting point of glass, thus reducing the cost and difficulties. Out of curiosity of finding out what exactly it is, I attempt to take the slide out of the beaker. But it turned out that it was just as fruitless as you trying to take a revenge on your ex by stamping on their shadow. As I watch this slide falling apart into the snowflake-like substance. Anyway, I think we are too far off our objective here. We shall focus back on the gold. Judging on the first glance, there is no visible damage to be seen. Before it can be put on scale, a quick cleanup is needed to eliminate all hazards. Which is done by neutralizing the acid with a base. Okay, this is the moment of truth. You can still place your bag here before I reveal it. And looks like gold has just won this round. Since the majority of you voted for the hydrofluoric acid theory from my last survey, in the next video we'll have more fun with hydrofluoric acid. Please stay tuned. A big thank you goes to Daniel Smith and Raphael Wakefield, and all my supporters on Patreon. 
Everyone support me on Patreon. Get to see my video 24 hours before I put it on YouTube. Anyone support me with three dollar or more will have their name listed as you see here. I really appreciate any of your support.